bright duty every student matters hello everyone how are you all fine now let us continue with the chapter of matter in our surrounding we had already studied about and learned that what matter is what are the different properties of matter you already learned that matter is made up of very small particles and with the help of an activity you saw that matter the size of the particles of matter are very very minute when we studied about the physical properties of matter that the matter which is made up of particles and each of these particles are spaced there is interparticular space between each particles then we learned this that there is an attractive force between these particles and another important thing that we learned is that the particles of matter are always in continuous random motion so these have been the physical properties of matter then we also continued learning the different states of matter and why do they exist in their particular state and we compared it with the properties of matter now today we are going to continue further with the whether to see that part matter can be changed from one state to other or not because when we look around us we see that matter exists in different states it exists in liquid form solid form and gaseous form now the question is why do they exist in that form and whether if they exist in that form whether it is possible for us to convert one state of matter to the other or not so let us see how it can be done so today's topic would be change of state of matter now this is a very interesting thing that water which is liquid at room temperature exists in the solid form as ice and also exists in the form of water vapor in the gaseous form so water is such an compound which exists in all the three states of matter so taking water as an example let's see whether the conversion of one state of matter to the next is possible and what are the important criteria that follows while converting the states of matter and we are also going to see that what actually happens when one state of matter is changing into the other state of matter so as i told you that we are going to take water as an example now we already know that water exists in three states it exists in solid in the form of ice it exists at as liquid in the form of water and in the gaseous state in the form of water vapor and we all know from our practical examples from the things that we see around us that conversion of ice into water or water into water vapor or vice versa is possible but we do not know why and how it is possible so let us study about it for that we need to do an activity let us carry out this activity to study the change of state of ice to water the method for the activity half fill the beaker with ice cubes and place it over the wire gauge and tripod stand suspend a celsius thermometer from the iron stand such that its bulb is well within the ice place a glass tarer in the ice and record the temperature of ice you find that it is 0 degree celsius or 273 kelvin now heat the beaker on a low bunsen flame and continuously to stir the content of beaker record the temperature 5 to 6 times till all the ice melts you will observe the temperature throughout remains 0 degree celsius that is 273 kelvin till all the ice melts
Now first let us concentrate as why does the solid ice melts into water. Now what happens in this first case, in the first case what happens that the block of ice is made up of particles. It is made up of particles which are very very close to one another. Fine. We know this is what we had learned. So these particles are very very close to one another. As we started heating it up, as we started heating up, we find that the particles have attained higher kinetic energy. Why? Because the heat has given energy to the particles to move for faster and thus the particle starts moving faster. As it starts moving faster, the inter-particle attraction that exists between the particles have now become less and due to which the particles are now free to move and thus they gradually start converting into water. So you will find that the ice will start melting due to the gain of energy from the source of heat. So as the particles move away from one another, they get converted from the solid state to the liquid state because their kinetic energy has increased, their forces of attraction between the particles have reduced and at the same time the particles random motion has also increased. So due to this factor there has been a change of state from the solid to the liquid state. Now the question is why don't you see any change in the temperature in these three sets? You know why? It just seems as if the heat energy that we had provided has somehow got lost or is hidden inside the beaker. Now this hidden energy that is present inside the beaker which does not show its presence in the form of increase of temperature in the thermometer is termed as latent heat. Okay, it is termed as latent heat. Now what is latent heat? Latent heat is also termed as hidden heat. Okay, hidden heat which we are not able to perceive, which we are not able to detect but this heat has been used up somewhere. Now the question is where it has been used up. Now as I explained to you that the solid converts into the liquid due to the gain of energy. Now this heat energy is the same energy, this hidden heat or the latent heat is the same energy which has been used up by the particles to get converted from the solid state into the liquid state. So as because the solid is converting into the liquid that's why this hidden heat or latent heat is termed as latent heat of fusion. Alright. Now the question is if we need to define what is latent heat of fusion. Let us define. Latent heat of fusion is defined as of fusion is defined as as the energy required required to convert 1 kg of solid into its liquid state at the atmospheric pressure at the atmospheric pressure and at the melting point is termed as latent heat of fusion. I repeat the energy required to convert 1 kg of solid into its liquid state at the atmospheric pressure and at the melting point is termed as latent heat of fusion. Okay, And here we see there is a term called melting point. So what is melting point? Melting point is the temperature. Melting point is the temperature. Is the temperature at which 
at which the solid converts into the liquid state okay at which the solid converts into the liquid state that is termed as the melting point all right so the heat that we thought has been lost is actually not lost it's there it seems to be hidden but it is there and it has been used up in converting the solid particles which were very close to bring them apart to increase the kinetic energy so that it can get converted from the solid state into the liquid state okay i hope this is clear now let us see what happens in the conversion of liquid into the gaseous state for that we'll come back to the activity as well let us do another activity the objective of the activity is to study the change of state from water to steam the method have filled the beaker with water and place it over a wire gauge and tripod stand suspend a celsius thermometer from the iron stand such that its bulb is well within the water now place a glass tarot in the water and record the temperature of water heat the beaker on low bunsen flame and continue to stir the water with the glass rod go on recording the temperature till water starts boiling allow the water to boil for a few minutes and record its temperature you would notice that the temperature of water rises till it starts boiling the temperature of boiling water is 100 degrees celsius that is 373 kelvin if we continue heating the water it changes to steam but the temperature remains constant that is 100 degrees celsius or 373 kelvin the temperature of boiling water may not be 100 degrees celsius or 373 kelvin because the boiling point also depends upon the atmospheric pressure the height of a place from the sea level etc now what is latent heat of vaporization it is again just like the definition of latent heat of fusion latent heat of vaporization is the amount of energy that is required by 1 kg of liquid to be converted into its gaseous state at the atmospheric pressure and at the boiling point why boiling point because it is the temperature at which the liquid starts converting into the gaseous state so similarly as it happened in case of the conversion of solid into the liquid state the same thing happens with the particles when it is getting converted from the liquid state to the gaseous state now let us see again how now if i just try to represent a liquid here try to represent the water here then the particles are far away from one another this is what the water is now as i continue giving heat energy what is happening i am trying to induce some energy into the system as we continue inducing energy into the system the particles gain gains energy more energy so that it can free itself from the attractive force of attraction that is present there and thereby the movement becomes much faster and that results in increase in the kinetic energy of the system so as the kinetic energy of the particles increases you would find that the particles will gradually start converting into the vapor state and the liquid will thus convert into the vapor state or the gaseous state so this is exactly what is happening the latent heat of vaporization that is there that latent heat though the temperature is not been detected in the thermometer but that heat is been used up by the water molecules to get converted into the vapor state they taking the energy which helps them to increase their space reduce their intermolecular forces of attraction their motion increases the speed of their motion increases and thus resulting in the higher kinetic energy 
I hope this is clear. So you have learned that how the conversion of state of matter can happen from solid to liquid to gases. A solid converts into the liquid state at its melting point and the amount of energy that is required to convert 1 kg of solid from the solid state into its liquid state at the room temperature and at its melting point is termed as latent heat of fusion. Similarly, a liquid will change into its vapor at its boiling point and the energy that is required to convert 1 kg of liquid from its liquid state to the gaseous state at its atmospheric pressure and at its boiling point is known as the latent heat of vaporization. I hope with this concept it is clear to you how the con conversion of state of matter takes place. Alright, now we are going to solve some questions based on this topic. Now as we had seen that with the change of temperature as we increase the temperature we could convert the solid into liquid and the liquid into the gaseous state in case of water. That means temperature has a very important role in order to change the state of matter. Now for that let us see how is it. So we are going to see the effect of temperature on the change of state of matter. So, in case of water, what do we see? So, that the solid changed into the liquid form and the liquid changes into the gaseous form. Now, how does it happen? That as we keep on increasing the temperature, the solid changes into the liquid and the liquid changes into the gaseous form. In case of water, this is the same case in all the solids, liquids and gases in any type of substance. The reason is that in case of solid, as we keep on giving energy to it, they will change their position. The particles are going to change their position. They will be far, far away from one another. They will take more space and thus execute random motion and thus the kinetic energy is, will go on increasing. As the kinetic energy increases, the particles will get converted from the solid state into the liquid state and from the liquid state to the gaseous state as we keep on increasing the temperature. So we can conclude that the as we increase temperature, increase of temperature will convert solid into the liquid state and further increase of temperature will increase, will convert liquid into the gaseous state. Similarly, the opposite is also possible. That means if we reduce the temperature, then the gaseous state will get converted into the liquid state and if we further reduce the temperature, then the liquid state will convert into the solid state. This is exactly what we see in case of water as well, that when the water is boiling, when the water is boiling, if you place a plate on top of the water vapor, there the condensation will happen. Why did it happen so? Because the heat has been transferred, the extra amount of energy has been transferred into the plate and thus the water vapor gets converted into the liquid form. So the decrease in temperature will convert a gaseous water vapor into the liquid water. On further reducing the temperature, by placing the water into the refrigerator, what are we doing? We are reducing the kinetic energy and as the kinetic energy reduces, the particles are going to come more closer to one another and the space will be reduced and thus the liquid will get converted into the solid. So, we can decrease by decreasing the temperature, by decreasing the temperature, we will be able to convert a liquid state into the solid state. So with this we can conclude that the temperature has a very important role to play in converting the state of matter. By increasing the temperature, solid gets converted into the liquid state and the liquid into the gaseous state. By reducing the temperature, 
gaseous state can be converted into the liquid state and on further reducing the temperature, the liquid state can be converted into the solid state.